Welcome everyone to the second data management uh, Brisbane branch webinar for 2021. Um, today we have a very special guest joining us from South Carolina and um, let me just um, and he will be talking about telling your data story with the three V's vocabulary voice and vision. We have um, Scott Taylor with us today, otherwise known as the data whisperer. And um, Scott is the principal consultant for Meta Meta Consulting. He's helped countless companies by enlightening business executives to the strategic value of proper data management. He focuses on the strategic why rather than the system implementation and the technical how. Some fun facts about Scott when he's not helping enterprises and tech brands tell their data story. He can be found kayaking in Black Rock Harbor. He also has other unique skills. He can juggle pins and blow a square bubble. <laughs> so we would like to hand over to Scott uh, to kick off the presentation for today. Thank you very much, Scott, for joining us. Oh, um, thank in you, a different David. time zone. Yeah, a little bit different time zone. It's 10 o'clock where I am yesterday. So I'm sure you're all familiar with that kind of uh, time zone change. Happy to be here. Let me share my screen so I can uh, get this going. In just a moment. Oops. It's a little, always a little, where do we go here? Share. And I'm still not, uh, I cannot share my screen while another participant oh, is sharing. So sorry, we'll let just, me stop uh, that kick share. that right off yes. with a very, uh, with a typical Zoom problem. Here we go. There you go. Get this, share that. There we go. Get this up. Good day, everybody. They're going to try to use the, local hello and greeting. So thank you everybody. Delighted to be here on tomorrow for you at lunchtime there in Brisbane and all across Australia. Scott Taylor, the data whisperer here to talk to you about leveraging uh, the three V's of data storytelling, vocabulary, voice, and vision, obviously a knowing wink to the three V's of big data, but it's all about telling a data story around data management. So I'm very pleased to be doing this worldwide virtual book tour for my new book called Telling Your Data Story, Data Storytelling for Data Management, 99% buzzword free. So that's a guarantee. I can guarantee you're not going to hear a lot of buzzwords from me today unless it's about how we try and get past them. I want to thank uh, Debbie and John and all the folks at all the Damon chapters in Australia for, for having me today, for sure. And I can't go too much further without uh, thanking my sponsor, Wind Shuttle, the folks who do uh, MDM and PIM since 2003, the folks at Wind Shuttle are sponsoring me to do this tour. So I at least got to give them a plug way up front there. If any of you have MDM questions or MDM needs, please let me know. We'll happy to connect you with this uh, great platform player here. So kicking it right off. Every enterprise has a data story to tell. And it's about why managing data is of strategic importance. I believe it is, you believe it is, but does the rest of your company understand it? Do they get excited when you start talking about data management? Are they nodding yes on the outside, but nodding off on the inside? So I'm hoping to give you some ways to talk about this really important uh, skill and, and um, activity that all of you manage at your organizations in a way that I hope will help get the business folks excited. So today's agenda, telling your data management story. I'll talk about why you actually even need a data management story. The relevance of data management across all these different trends that are going on. Some people think there's so much advancement in all these different areas that we don't even need data management. We know that's wrong. The types of data storytelling, leveraging those three Vs, vocabulary, voice, and vision, and then an example of putting it all in play. Everything you're gonna to see today is actually in my book as well. So these are some highlights and some tidbits that I've got as a compilation to talk for the next 40 minutes or so. But if you like any of this, I encourage you to grab the book and uh, people are, are, are loving it all over the world so far. So I'm delighted with uh, the response I've been getting on telling your data story. And I don't pretend to explain how to do data management. All of you on this call probably can do data management better than I can. My role is to give you a new way to talk about what you already know. 
You all need more business support. You all need stakeholder involvement. You all need more funding. How do you get that from people who don't know how data management works, who aren't interested in the technical side, who don't care about your reference data architecture? How do you get them excited? You've got to tell a better story. Now, there's only so much we can all absorb in 40 minutes here, but I at least want to give you some highlights and some thoughts. And if anything, leave you today with the idea that you've got to think about this storytelling aspect of your career and build those soft skills that are so important in business communication. So a little bit more about my background since it's my presentation, I have a whole slide on me. As Debbie mentioned, I'm all about the why, not the how as a data management advocate. I've been selling and telling and yelling about data management for the last almost 30 years now across a variety of different responsibilities I've had. Uh, both at Nielsen, Dun & Bradstreet, and working with a whole host of uh, tech brands and calling on every kind of enterprise out there. So I started off in the sales and marketing space selling data management services in the form of data from Nielsen and D&B. And that gave me an opportunity to talk with every kind of company all over the world. And I started to see some common themes, some trends, some challenges that every kind of company had and tried to put them together in a very business accessible way. So one thing I do know for sure, no matter what you do in business, no matter how different your business is from the other people on the call, the challenges in data management are actually more the same than they are different. I think I'm kind of hardwired for the data management space, master data, reference data, ontology, taxonomy space, because when I was a kid, my parents told me instead of building with my Lego blocks, I sorted them. So if you sorted your blocks as a kid, that's why you're in the data business. And if your children sort their blocks, you want to encourage that. We need more people in the data business, that's for sure. I do a ton of content. If you haven't seen it, I'll share some links later, but you've got to see my puppet show. Yes, I've got a wide range here. I can white, write white papers, but I also do puppet shows about the importance of data management. You can see me with two of my best friends there, the CDO, the chief dog officer, and the ITB who loves buzzwords, who chatter all in this uh um, video called Too Much Tech Talk. I think you'll probably find some uh, things that are very relevant to the challenges you find every day in that three minute video with a bunch of puppets. I also put a master data superhero backstory that's a cartoon. And I even have a video on some bad data ideas. So you wanna avoid some of those. As you can probably tell already, spoiler alert, I don't do a whole lot of whispering. We save that for the data. We got to calm data down, but we've got to yell about why the value of data management is so important to every organization out there, no matter what you do as an enterprise. I am super proud to be the number one thought leader in big data, according to Thinkers 360. I do a whole bunch of events. I'm doing a hosting a 24 hour master data marathon event next week. So I'll be up all night. I'll be up when you get up. So if you want to join this event, it's great. It does uh, cost a couple of euros out there, but check it out. It's from a, uh, some folks called Think Linkers. We did one in this it, last September. We're doing another one next week. And it's a great event all around MDM. And I'm also was recently listed in the who's who of data management. So there's my street cred for you. And I wrote a book, as I mentioned there. So one of my favorite uh, comments that somebody's made is it's a must read for anybody who needs funding for data management. And that's got to be all of you. That was the point of the book. And it's the number one data book in performing arts in Amazon. Now, how did it get to be that? Well, Amazon, for some reason, categorized this book in performing arts. Even though it's ranking 193, it's the only data book in performing arts on Amazon. So that makes me the number one book. See, you can make the data do anything if you want to. And it's published by Technics Publications. Steve Hoberman, who uh, John mentioned, has been out to Australia with his data modeling zone. A great guy. He publishes the uh, DMBOK too. So I was delighted that he picked up my book as well as part of his stable. What inspired me to write this book was I listened to all this talk about data science, about data literacy, about data storytelling. And I thought, where is the voice of data management? And I didn't hear it. I don't know if you heard it, but if it's there, it's very faint. 
So I felt that somebody had to stand up for our side of the space, not the analytics side, not the data science side, but the data management side and say, this is important too. We have stories to tell as well. So that was my inspiration, my personal inspiration, my objective in writing this book. Now, I'm sure a lot of you follow Dataversity. There was a very interesting blog in the middle of last year from some iconic uh, leaders in the data management space, John Landley and Tom Redman, and they were joined by a number of folks in the DEMA organization to put together this, this kind of call to action, as they called it, which was titled, Data Management Has Failed. And they mentioned there were a number of things they, they suggested. And one quote that struck me was, as a community, we have failed to educate leaders on the need for high quality data and craft messages that people will listen to. I couldn't agree with that more. The messages we normally speak in the space are very difficult for business people to listen to, to understand and support. So a month after this dropped, I wrote a response uh, blog to it, which said data management hasn't failed, but data management storytelling has. So let's not change data management. Let's just change the messaging. And one thing I mentioned in there was data management programs, there's a lot of reasons they fail, but the overwhelming majority suffer from the inability to demonstrate and then communicate business alignment. That's two things there. Can you demonstrate you've got business alignment and then can you communicate it in a way that the business will understand? That's what evangelism is all about. And as I mentioned, I do evangelism as a service for the data space. You've got to get people to believe and then you've got to get them to practice. There's two pieces there. So I responded to, to John and Tom and actually our two blogs ranked nine and 10 for the whole year. So people were reading theirs and reading mine and somehow it all came together. So that's the data diversity view. If you prefer to take a look at McKinsey, obviously they do a lot of big thinking. They published a white paper last year as well on six ways to drive data governance excellence, data governance, a core part of data management. And they said secure, you know, and I looked at that and said, all right, three of those six, securing top management attention, integrating with primary transformation themes, and generating excitement for data, those are all, those all need to tell a data story. You can't do those things unless you can tell a story. So let's take a look at some of the macro trends out there. And again, these are ways to think about it. These are ways to talk about it and hopefully they'll resonate and they're, they're ways that will help you Tomorrow and the next day, explain data management and its connection to all the things your organization's trying to do. So if you take a look at the macro trends that are all over uh, every board level and C-level discussion, whether it's digital transformation, the internet of things, struggling with data privacy regulations, know your customer if you're in the financial space, e-commerce, which obviously just boom during COVID, a lot of folks who weren't in e-commerce suddenly had to get into it. Artificial intelligence, transforming your customer experience, or even the fourth industrial revolution. All these big trends that are going on here, I look at every one of those and say, you cannot do any of those without data management. Data management is macro trend agnostic. This is the hot topics of today, but whatever the hot topics were five years ago and whatever they're gonna be in ten, five and 10 years from now, they're all, if it has to do with technology, they're gonna need data management. So it leads me to this truth about data management, the value of every digitally transformative customer experience, every as a service offering, every foray into e-commerce, every implementation of, of enterprise software is inextricably linked to the successful output of your data management efforts. You can't do any of those things unless you have the foundation. Now, a lot of people sum this up simply with G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out, rubbish in, rubbish out. That doesn't always hit the point either. It's almost become an overused cliche. I'd actually like to elevate this idea to the concept of the golden rule of data. Do upon your data as you would have it do upon you. What you put in, yes, is what you get out. Data management work directly relates to the output 
in business intelligence. They are, as I mentioned, inextricably linked. Now you put bad data in an ERP, you get a bad ERP. You put bad data into CRM, you get missed customer opportunities. You put bad data into FinTech, you might get a visit from the regulators. Bad data into machine learning, you get bad robots. Bad data into BI, BS. Bad data into AI, AS, artificial stupidity. So no matter how you slice it, no matter how you dice it, the golden rule of data prevails. Do unto your data as you would have it do unto you. Now, when we look at this category of data storytelling, it's probably the hottest non-technical thing going on in the space today. And when I looked at that, I went, okay, but all of the books out there are really about business intelligence. They're about analytics. There's 30 data storytelling books out there. And until I got to the scene, all of them were about analytics. So now there's one about data management. Again, there's two types of data storytelling. I wanna take you through both of them. One is for analytics, the other is for data and data management. And I kind of bucket the space between these two poles here. Obviously there's lots of subcategories between there, but when you look at the data space, there's analytics, and business intelligence, and then there's data management. I think of analytics as deriving meaning from data, is taking the insight that you've got and putting it in a business context. And all the things around data literacy, data science, machine learning, AI, visualization, those are all things that people do to derive meaning and share the value of the data. But before you derive meaning, You've got to determine the truth in that data. You've got to do the data management side, data governance, data quality, master data, reference data, metadata, MDM, RDM, PIM, all those foundational aspects that build that content, that structured, highly structured, well-governed, expertly stewarded content that enables the analytics output. So if you think about these two types of data storytelling, Analytics data storytelling is telling stories with data, using it. Data management data storytelling is about data and making it. And even if you want to go a little further, the plot of the analytics data story comes from the business intelligence side, but the characters come from data management. So if there isn't any data management, then those analytics folks don't have any stories to tell. So it leads me to, you must determine the truth first before you derive meaning. Obviously I'm on the truth side and so are you. And hence the meaning of my truth hat here, which is part of my you know, personal brand as I go out into the space. Determine the truth first before you derive meaning. It's not egg or omelet. It's not chicken or egg here. It is egg and omelet. So I blew my own punchline. I didn't like that. Anyway, how do you start a data management story? Just simply once upon a time, let's go through a couple of ways that people start that might not get you as far as you need to go. You might use the terminology of the space. This is a cartoon actually out of the book. There were a bunch of cartoons in the book that were fun to put together. You've got this MDM leader saying, oh, we need a golden record. And the CEO with his head in his hands just saying, golden, that sounds expensive. Or do you show them this? This explains it all, doesn't it? Here it is, our beautiful architecture, our wonderful data model. This is how we do it, business side. They're not gonna even begin to understand that. Or do you share things? Sometimes the analysts don't always help us. I had to show you this, this Gartner study where they looked at organizations measuring the value of master data, 90% said, no, we don't measure it. And 10%, their answer was other. I hope yes was in that other. It's really about how you begin. And so here are three common false starts for your data management story tell, for your data management story. One of them is we are doing all these important data quality initiatives. Our company needs better data quality. Now data quality is important. You've got to measure it. You've got to monitor it. Your organization, your team needs to track it, but data quality doesn't sell at the C level. I'll repeat that. Data quality 
doesn't sell at the C-level. I never met a CEO in my 30 years of talking about this who cares about data quality in the way that we do, who says data quality is a primary objective of our organization. It's not. It's a very emotional, subjective word. Everybody's got an opinion about data quality. It's, and actually, when you think about it, the reason you want better data quality is to enable other activities. Think about those other activities. Start with those. Don't start with the data quality piece. Again, no insult to the data quality experts out there, but that word doesn't sell. If it did, they've been talking about it for years and years, and we're still having the same challenges. Here's a popular one from the last couple of years. Data's the new oil. You can look through LinkedIn and see people debate this cliche over and over again. Some take it literally, some take it figuratively. Some start going off on environmental aspects of the metaphor. Some say, well, you know, it's not even new. All I say is if we have this much conversation about a metaphor, it's not a good metaphor. The reason to have this kind of figure of speech is to make the conversation go more quickly not go off on some rabbit hole debating, debating this, this, this concept here. And actually, I really fault the, the economists for running this, well, not fault them, but the people who took this story from the economist and ran with it, because even though that you've probably seen this graphic a million times, all you have to do is look at the subhead of this story to realize it's not a positive story about data. The subhead says the data economy demands a new tr approach to antitrust rules. Is that what you want to talk about in the first five minutes of your presentation? No. Get, say no to dit no. And there's another popular one. We've got more data now than ever before. Actually, every minute, all this data gets created. There's more data than now than there was when we even started this presentation. Again, it just sounds like a cacophony. It doesn't really have anything relating to your business. It's just a way to kind of get your engines going. So be more disciplined in how you start. I'm a sales guy from way back. The first five minutes is the most important part of any discussion. You've got to grab their attention right away. So don't use these false starts here. The old data stories need to change. Now I can't tell your data story, but every enterprise has one, but I can give you all the hints I've got in my head on how to find your own. And the way you find it is to look at the essence of your business. Why does your business exist? What is your business trying to do? And in my opinion, every business out there, no matter what category you're in, is providing value to their relationships through your brands at scale. That's what you want to do. Provide value to your relationships through your brands at scale. And when we talk about value, it's how you grow the business, how you improve the business, how you protect the business. And when we talk about scale, and that's where we come in, everybody wants to do it at scale. Scale means technology, hardware, software, data. If you've got data at your enterprise, you have data, you have enterprise data problems. There's no way around it. So you have to quickly connect the idea of data to your enterprise vision and, and purpose. And that purpose is provide value to your relationships through your brands at scale. Now fill in the blanks here. This is, here's a clue on how to make this your own. What do we mean by relationships? Customer, vendor, partner, prospect, citizen, patient. What do you call the relationships you have? That's where it gets very specific. But they are all, if you aggregate them all up, they're all a different kind of relationship. If you don't have relationships, you don't have a business. So it's the most important part of your organization and those relationships. And when we say brand, is it a product? Is it a service? Is it an offering? Is it a location? Is it a banner? What are the finished goods you might produce? Do you have ingredients? Do you have materials? Do you have those vendors and, and suppliers that are part of it? All the things that come together to produce the brand that your relationships get value from. Taking a look at this, those blue and green lists, those are really classic master data domains. So every time your senior leadership talks in their language about the value they bring to their relationships through their brands, start asking them, how's the data they've got on those things? Probably not very good. Probably have duplicates, probably have hierarchy trouble, 
probably have categorization confusion, probably have some conflicting geographies, all these kind of fundamental piece parts that every organization suffers with, I'm sure are somewhere in your organization as well. So hopefully this master statement, this big headline here about value and relationships and brands helps you at least start that data story. How does data management fit into the digital transformation space? I'm gonna give you a very short version of how it is actually the foundation of digital transformation. So I'm sure a lot of your organizations out there are on some form of digital transformation journey. And again, in my work, I found that every organization goes through three phases of this journey in almost a linear process. And data management is the foundation of a successful progress through that journey. Every organization, a lot of them suffer from this idea of multiple silos. They're in some form of legacy state. Now, legacy doesn't necessarily mean old. You could have bought a brand new platform for your marketing group yesterday, and now you've created a new version of customer. The legacy part is that it's disconnected, that it's siloed. You've got sales, marketing, finance, operations, all these different systems that support them that create multiple versions of the same kind of entity. I'm sure it's something you've all seen and all suffer with. So you wanna move from this idea of being in a legacy state to being part of an integrated enterprise. How do you become relationship centric? How do you put the most important entities of your business at the center of what you do, both strategically and systematically? That could be product 360, that could be customer 360, that could be some sort of uh, um, holistic view of whatever the most important aspects of your business are. Those are all very common ways we describe things like master data, but you wanna make sure everybody in your organization has what the data they need that they can trust in the right context, in the right place, at the right time, and that takes this integration. Again, you can tell right away, I'm not the technical guy. I'm just talking highly conceptually here. Now, being relationship centric is wonderful, but that's still within your own organization. Then you've got to connect externally with other partners. And you do that through these connected ecosystems as part of a trust network. How do you connect? How do you aggregate? How do you integrate? How do you interoperate with other parties on a seamless basis? Whether it's through some form of portal, again, doesn't matter how you do it, but the notion of being seamlessly connected and being able to share trusted data through other parties is really important to a lot of organizations. So going from multiple silos to being relationship centric to a trust network, going from a legacy state to an integrated enterprise to connected ecosystems takes two universal requirements, authenticated identity and a standardized data structure. Do you have the right identity? Can you prove that each of these entities, this relationship, this brand are unique, that they've got the right hierarchies, that they've got the right classifications, that they've got the right geographies, and do you have a standardized data structure in some way that can share that information and circulate it and integrate it and interoperate with other parties? Again, a lot in that notion there, but the requirements always are we know we've got the thing we've got, and then we can put it in a way that other systems can understand it as well. Data standards are critical to every vertical out there, no matter where you are, no matter what business you're in. So every organization has some sort of vertical standards. Those standards literally provide authenticated identity and a common data structure. That's what they're for. So that's the key to interoperability. Doing that takes data management, which leads me to the conclusion that data management is the foundation of digital transformation. Now, getting to these three V's of storytelling here, data storytelling, you've got the vocabulary. You want to establish an accessible vocabulary. You want to harmonize to a common voice and you want to illuminate the business vision. And let me take you through all three of these. Establishing this accessible vocabulary starts with the words you use and the words you use are important. I've already given you a couple of examples of those. So you wanna get rid of this legacy lexicon, these emotional subjective words like quality and cleansing and freshness and hygiene. I never met a business person who gets excited about being part of a data hygiene project, do you? 
So the words you use, make sure you're not scaring people away with that kind of stuff. You've got to be strategic. You've got to show how things more action oriented, more objective types of words. So some suggestions are, instead of talking about quality, I would talk about the structure of your customer hierarchies. All your business people are going to be dealing with hierarchies in some way or another. Standards, as we mentioned before, the coverage you have of your business, enabling interoperability. These kinds of notions, I think, have business value that people can understand. And then you say, look, the data's got to be right for us to do that. Think about your enterprise terminology for relationships, for offerings, for hierarchies, for segmentation, for geographies, these basic notions and dimensions that drive so much reporting. And also use your industry vocabulary, your industry nomenclature, the standard terms within your vertical the biz that the business people already understand. So one handy tip here, vocabulary tip, is start with your existing business glossary. If you've done the basics in data management, you've created this business glossary, you've gone through that painful, arduous task of making sure everybody's got the same definition of customer, whatever you might call it, Make, start using those words. I have a little concept I call the four C's of master data, which is the way I explain master data to people who have no idea what it is. And I talk about you need this foundational structure on all entities, a code, a company, a category, and a country. So a code uniquely identifies an entity. A company gives you that parent-child hierarchy relationship. A category lets you know what kind of thing it is and um, which drives market share analysis, targeting. We're looking for this kind of company. We wanna find more of these kinds of companies. And then just cause they all start with C country or some form of geography, a sales market, a media market, a measurement market. But if you have these four C's on your data, you'll know where something is, you'll know what it is, you'll know who owns it, and you'll know it's unique. Think about all the data problems that go away when you've got that standardized foundation underneath it. A lot of reporting is driven off of uniqueness, of hierarchy, of taxonomy and geography. So let me help you. Hopefully this helps explain it to the business side. I've got a couple of videos on the four C's if you're interested in it, and obviously they're in the book too. Second fee, you wanna to harmonize to a common voice. Now harmony doesn't mean everybody sings the same notes, but it does mean they all sound good together. How do you talk about it amongst your own business peers? Do you have an elevator pitch? If you have an hour with the business leaders or five minutes with your CFO or one minute with your CEO or your board, how do you explain it? Avoid those in-depth technical explanations. That's about the how. I don't know a business leader who will accept the how until they understand the why. That's what they will interrupt you with. They'll say, why are you telling me this? I've had CEOs say that to me in the middle of a conversation. Why are you even bothering me with this? Why? They don't ask how, they ask why. So avoid those cliche fast starts. Have a consistent tone and tenor. You should all be able to explain the same story no matter who's in the room. And when you leave, people should be able to understand it and explain it to others. You may wanna create a internal communications vehicle. I have examples of newsletters, of web, uh, web blogs and, and so on that organizations have done to keep that data management story going within their organization. It's almost an internal marketing program. You got to sell this thing. The story you are going to tell to your organization, it's a sales pitch. Now you're not looking for, you know, and you are actually looking for money at the end of it. And some people kind of, you know, don't really like the whole sales part of, of whatever they might do, but I've got some tips on how to kind of get past that as well. But you are selling it and selling is convincing somebody of the benefits of what you have to offer. Selling is creating a story that people will take business action off of. So if you've got sales training, be proud of it. Now think of the business topics you're gonna focus on. How are we gonna grow? We gotta increase sales. How are we gonna improve? You wanna reduce costs and, and operational efficiency. How are we gonna protect? We've gotta mitigate risks. We've got security concerns. We've got data privacy we've gotta we've got to look at. These are all topics that are, that are bothering and certainly gnawing at the business side. Data management can help you with all three of those. A really well-governed master data record will actually do work with 
or help with all three of those things with the same data. So there's that foundation again that I keep talking about. So here's a little voice tip for you. Seek out other storytellers in your organization. If you don't have these soft skills, and I don't expect all of you have them, obviously I have them. I believe I have them a lot. I don't have the hard skills of programming. We've got the soft skills of, of storytelling. Go to the other peers in your organization and have them help you. Again, it's an internal marketing program. Your marketing department might be able to help you with it. Your sales department, they tell stories for a living or they don't have a job. If you've got a big enough organization, you might have a communications department, PR folks, people who are dying to help the rest of the organization explain things better. Seek out those resources. Nobody expects you to be good at everything. So find those partners and have them help you put this story together. Practice, practice, practice. The first time you tell it better not be the time you have to tell it. So make sure you get that work done as well. Now, illuminate the business vision. How do you do that? So my feeling is all data management work needs to enable the strategic intentions of your enterprise. Back to that idea of providing value to your relationships through your brands at scale. What major initiatives does your organization have that have the concepts of relationships and brands in them? A lot of them do. And it's about the business and you are the business. You are part of the business. So here's a little vision tip. How do you know what the vision of your company is? What do your leaders say? What is in your annual report if you're a public company? What's your strategy statement? What, what happens at the company meetings when they talk about here are our objectives? Investor day presentations are a great place to look. If you've, again, if your company's public, then your senior leadership goes out on a road show and talks about why they should invest in your company. The first slides of that road show, that's where the meat is. That's where the gold is. That's where you're gonna find, here's what your own company says it wants to do. So let me put it all in play for you in the last couple of minutes. Let me show you an actual example of teasing out these three Vs for an organization. It's a little abbreviated due to time, but I wanna show you how I think this technique might work. So I went and found an investor day presentation for a Fortune Top 200 company, a global organization here. And this is an actual presentation I did while I was at Dun & Bradstreet, but it's a great example of showing how to the finding the strategic intentions of an organization. So in this investor day presentation, and these are little snippets of a bunch of slides they had that I've highlighted for you, what's their vision? It says our vision, it's right there in the presentation. That's not hard to find. Their vision is we aspire to be the premier partner of choice for our customers and suppliers. What did I say before? It's right there. That's what this organization wants to do. They wanna be as trusted as possible to their key customers and their key relationships. Where's the voice of this business? Customer engagement, enterprise effectiveness, brand management, all those have grow, improve, and protect in them. They wanna differentiate the customer experience. They want localized productivity and efficiency. Again, grow, improve, and protect. Their own CIO said, we have this constant mantra, be more efficient, deliver high quality service, spend less on sustaining, deliver more innovation. You can't innovate if you're dealing with all these duplicates all the time. If your hierarchies aren't right, if your classifications are not right, you can't innovate at scale. So there's a lot of voice clues in the way they talked about their own strategic framework. And finally, the vocabulary is deep in, within these company fast facts here, doing business in 90 plus countries. How many, you know, you can just imagine how many ERP um, and uh, major systems they have across all those countries. It's, I'm sure it was a mess. They've got 800 suppliers. They got over 100,000 customers. Again, lots of hierarchy and taxonomy and classification within there. It's just loaded with the vocabulary of their business. So a very short, high-level version of here's the vision, here's the voice, here's the vocabulary, and here was Checkmate. We showed them the actual data. The data reality was we took their file, we bounced it against the standardized file at Dun & Bradstreet, came back and showed they had 185 duplicates for this major customer called Panasonic Mobile Communications. The selling stops there. This is a mess. How can you possibly be the premier partner of choice 
with Panasonic if you got 185 copies of the same record. You got to get this fixed. This wasn't the only one they had a problem with. But if you take a look at this stuff, you're trying to do a customer churn model or you're trying to build customer loyalty and you've got all these duplicates. How do you even know who you're talking to or you're talking about? So their data was a mess. And so very quickly, we were able to show you can't achieve that vision if your data is in this shape at the bottom. These things directly connect. Here's another, that's a good data story, a good way to put it. Here's just a, a very scary data story. Citigroup, I don't know if anybody's from Citigroup or Citibank's on, on the call here, but you know, all respect to you, they were just slammed with a $400 million fine for their long standing failure in their data systems. This is a remarkable document. You can find it on the uh, internet. It's the, uh, um, the, this is the US suit from the Department of Treasury and just highlighted here, the bank failed to implement and maintain a data governance program. I can't believe it either, but this is a pretty tough way to build a data governance program and $400 million fine. You can buy a whole lot of data management work for $400 million. So here's a data story you never want to tell. So how do you live happily ever after with all this? You start with this idea that every enterprise has a data story about delivering value to your relationships through your brands at scale. There's two types of data storytelling. Don't forget that. There's the one about data, which is data management and determining the truth. And then there's the more popular one out there, which is with data for business intelligence to derive meaning. Data management is macro trend agnostic. No matter where we were, no matter where we are now, no matter where we're going, we are absolutely gonna need those disciplines that all of you know and work so well. Leverage those three Vs of data storytelling, accessible vocabulary, harmonize to a common voice, illuminate the business vision, and an effective narrative captures the hearts and minds of your business. And it will also unify and motivate your own team. It's an exciting thing to talk about. That's what you want to do. So I've got a couple more thoughts at, um, after this, but I just want to pause for a moment and take any questions any folks might have. Let me take a look and kind of open this up here. I see the chat. Um, let me get the rest of this going. Not sure if there were any Hi, questions. Everyone. Yeah, if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat or raise your hand if you want to ask Scott some questions. You've done a good job, Scott. Everyone understands right. your story, no question. Okay, that's good. That's <laughs> fine then. Yeah, so happy to happy to chat about any of this if you like. So, um, yeah, you can reach out to me and, you know, anything that, 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 that comes to mind. But so just kind of wrapping it up here, you know, let me help. I'm already helping. Uh, certainly a good way to start this. This is really, I think, and again, I know I'm talking about my own work, but it's become a rather unique uh, volume across a lot of people's data libraries because it really does focus on more of this soft skill and is primarily focused on the work that we do in our part of the data space. It's organized pretty cleanly. It starts with my data story. I go on my career, not to just brag about what I did, but to convince you on why you should even listen to me. I talk about everybody's data story. I've got these classic foundational situations that I describe that are really relevant to every enterprise out there. I help you frame your data story, a simple set of frameworks to help you articulate that data value, the four C's. I've got something called the eight eights. I've got these three V's and so on. How do you sell that data story? Some tips and tricks on how to create this compelling narrative. Building the data story, a lot deeper work. I only showed you that one slide, but a lot deeper work on how to find those strategic intentions of your enterprise and speak to the business in their business language. And then finding the data story. I've got about 10 examples, similar to the one I showed, of organizations and things I found in terms of how they've publicly talked about what they wanted to do or presentations that folks have shared with me and that weren't about data management but showing how to connect what they were talking about to the important work that we all do. If you're interested in this book, again, it's available with Technics Publications. If you use my code, Data Whisperer, you'll get 20% off. You can also buy it at Amazon. Jeff Bezos is gonna charge whatever he wants, so I can't give you a discount there, but happy to have you get the book in any way you'd like. 
And please follow me as well. Let me move this here. I don't know if it's blocking. Follow me on LinkedIn if you liked any of this content. I've got tons of it. That's a QR code. If you hold your phone right up to the screen, it'll get you right to my profile on LinkedIn, talking about being a structured data guy. I practice what I preach there. And also you can find my YouTube channel. All you gotta do is Google the Data Whisper, Scott Taylor, Data Whisper YouTube, and it'll come up. I've got 50 videos and counting all about the things I've talked about. So whether you want the more humorous stuff like puppets and cartoons, or whether you want more serious stuff like how data management is the foundation of digital transformation in the four C's and so on, I've got it there. If it helps you explain something, please use it. You can't steal it from me because I'm giving it to you. We all have a part to play in this space. I feel this is mine, which is a way to help you talk about something you already know and give you that new way to convince and converse with those important business relationships that you've got. And my final word to remind everybody, good decisions you make on bad data are just bad decisions you don't know about yet. So I wanna thank you all, this has been great. I don't mind staying up late to talk to everybody in Australia, this has been wonderful. I wanna thank Debbie and John as well for, for having me. Happy to take any more questions, but if not, uh, we can wrap it up from here and uh, let me know what you think. Thank you so much, Scott, that's wonderful. I don't know if you've seen the comments, but um, people are commenting, it's been a oh, great presentation. Great. So refreshing and insightful. So um, <laughs> that has really been, um, fantastic. Thank you so much for staying oh, up late yeah, to meet with us in Australia. Because it distracts me. So uh, yeah, that's great. Oh, wonderful. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, we've, um, I must say, I love the puppet show. Um, I've, <laughs> I've even used it already with some of my clients to explain it and everyone loved it. Um, I love the comments around where it says, if your data is so big, why can't you see it? Yes. So um, some very, <laughs> I think a lot to, to have a laugh about there. Uh, your Lego bl block story. Well, I can certainly, I, I certainly have to admit, I'm guilty of sorting my kids' Lego. So I even took a photo of it the one day because I was, I have it as a, um, a thing to write an article around how how data management is like Lego blocks and sorting it. So maybe we'll see one of those one day. Um, and I love the, the formula uh, for finding your data strategy and your data story and, um, and the organization's strategic intention. So that's so important. I've seen so many, you know, strategies or visions written as and, you know, give people the right data at the right time. And um, I think it's just so important to connect it to that organizational uh, intentions and strategy. So fantastic that you've codified that for us. So can't wait to get a copy of your book. And um, yes, we will... Um, I'm just having a look here if there's any other questions. Um, yeah, lots of comments, buying your book, lots of ideas around how to approach discussions with the C-suite. And um, we'll have a look, lots of people wanting to have a look at your resources. So, um, Oh, super. Thank you. Well, this is great. Yeah, sorry I couldn't be there in person. Maybe someday again, as this all clears up. Uh, but uh, this was certainly fun to chat with everybody. And uh, I appreciate the time and the opportunity. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for joining us. All right. Okay. Well, bye everyone. Until the next time, um, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Bye-bye.